Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six. All right, so we're going to be looking at that phrase, cannot be my disciple. And we're going to be reading from Luke 14, verse 25 through 33. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Mark chapter 8 verse 35 reads, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. John 12, verse 24 through 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Colossians 1 verse 5 through 6, For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit, as it doth also in you since the day ye heard of it, and knew the grace of God in truth. So we are losing our life, that old man which was trusting in himself, that was having confidence in the flesh by the works of the law, and we are losing our life for Jesus Christ and for the gospel, for the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And except that corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, Jesus said, it abideth alone. Because my friend, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. But he says, but if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. And we read in Colossians 1, 5 through 6 that the gospel is what brings forth fruit. It is the goodness of God which leadeth thee to repentance. So when the Lord Jesus is saying that if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brother and sisters, he's not saying that we are to hate them Because that would contradict what Jesus said in Luke chapter 6, verse 27. But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. What Jesus Christ is saying is that we are to put God first, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And we are not to put our trust in other men or in ourselves. And if we do not put our trust in Jesus Christ and the finished work of Calvary and the blood that Christ shed for our sins on the cross, it is finished, then we cannot be his disciple. Because we will be those in Romans 10, verse 2 through 4, that have a zeal of God but not according to knowledge and that are just going about to establish their own righteousness. And we will be making twofold the child of hell than ourselves. So we must be born again, and we must not exalt ourselves, but rather the Lord Jesus Christ. We must forsake all, and we must hate even our own life. We have to die to self. We must decrease so that He can increase. Because the Lord does not want us going around preaching a work salvation and talking about how good we are. No, the Lord wants us to talk about how good He is and how that He loves us and that He died for us. And He said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel unto every creature. We are to bear the gospel of glad tidings. We are to have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, which is how we have peace with our Heavenly Fathers through the blood of Jesus Christ. Colossians 3, verse 3 through 4 reads, For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. So according to Colossians 3, verse 4, Jesus Christ is our life. 
We are no longer trusting in our own life. We have forsaken, we hate even our own life, and we put all of our trust in Jesus Christ, who is our life. In John chapter 10, verse 10, 10 representing the law, Jesus said, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Three things there. But Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So this is an abundant life. This isn't just any life. This is abundant life. This is everlasting life. Galatians chapter 3 verse 21 through 22. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. See, it's given, it's the free gift, not of works, lest any man should boast, as Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 says. And the law cannot give you life. A lot of people are trying to obtain eternal life through the works of the law, and they have not yet to lay the foundation of Jesus Christ and to enter into his rest and to cease from their own works, as Hebrews chapter 4, verse 10 says. In John 14, verse 6, there's the number of the beast, six, six hundred, three score and six, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. See, God is no respecter of persons, whether you Jew, Greek, big, small, from Africa, from China, it doesn't matter, friend. Jesus Christ is the door, the door of faith, and he is our only hope, and we must trust in him. See, the three, they try to go another way. Broad is the way which leads to destruction, and many there be thereon. But narrow is the way, and straight is the gate which leads to eternal life, and few there be that find it. See, many will say in that day, Lord, Lord. That's what Jesus said. Many are going to say, Lord, Lord. Do we not prophesy in thy name? Do we not cast out devils in thy name? Do we not do many wonderful works in thy name? But they were not trusting in Christ. They were trusting in themselves. They were trusting in their wonderful works. And they were not really his disciples because they were not exalting the Lord Jesus Christ, but rather themselves. Romans 9 verse 30 through 33. What shall we say then? that the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. But Israel which followed after the law of righteousness hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, verse 33, Behold, I lay in Sion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. So you see, according to Romans 9 verse 32, many will end up in the lake of fire. Not because God is not good and that he didn't taste death for every man and shed his precious blood for their sins, but rather because they didn't seek it by faith, And they didn't want to give glory to God, but they wanted to glory in their shame and glory in their flesh and do it by the works of the law. So the books are going to be open and they're going to be judged by their works because that's what they were trusting in. Only those who trusted in Christ and entered into his rest that was available for us from the foundation of the world, the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world, those are the ones who have their names written in the book of life. And when the book of life is open and your name is in there, you'll hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. But these heretics who don't want to bow the knee and give God glory, they will hear, depart from me, ye that work iniquity, I never knew you. Because the Lord knoweth them that trust in him. He's a stronghold in the day of trouble, as Nahum chapter 1 verse 7 says. Romans 8 verse 1 through 4. 
There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Verse 3, For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. You see how the number 3 represents those that are still in the flesh? Verse 4, That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. This is Christ in you, the hope of glory. What the law could not do. See, there's something that the law cannot do. It cannot save you. It cannot justify you. It cannot give you life. The life is in Christ Jesus. And we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. In Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father came in a body and He shed His blood, His own blood. He's purchased us with His own blood. And he was buried and rose again the third day. And if we would put our faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ, we could be justified and spend eternity with him in Jerusalem above. Galatians chapter 2 verse 19 through 21. For I through the law am dead to the law that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live, in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. And I tell you the truth, there are many that are frustrating the grace of God and receiving the grace of God in vain. So continuing on with Luke 14, verse 27, we read, And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest happily, after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Now that phrase, his cross, just so happens to be mentioned ten times in the Blessed King James Bible. Ten representing the law. Jesus said, Whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Just like we just read in Galatians, we are dead to the law for what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh. Colossians 1 verse 20 through 23. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. So you better believe that these false teachers, these ministers of Satan, they're going to try to move you away from the hope of the gospel. These false Bibles, these false tongues, they don't want you to be grounded and settled. No, they want you to doubt. They want you to trust in yourself. They don't want you to enter into his rest so that you can be saved and know you can have eternal life and have full assurance. And in verse 22, he says that we are presented holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. This is because we have put on the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our righteousness. He is our holiness. And this is why we are unblameable and unreprovable, because who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? My sins have been forgiven and have been washed in his blood. 
That is how I have peace is through the blood of his cross. I'm not trusting in myself anymore. I'm trusting in Jesus Christ. It is finished. Colossians 2 verse 13 through 15. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all. All trespasses. Not just some, friend. He's forgiving you all trespasses. Amen. Glory be to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Amen. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ became sin for us. He knew no sin, but he gave his life as a sacrifice for you and I so that we could be made the righteousness of God in him. And he nailed our sin to his cross. Now we read in Isaiah 53 verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him, that's on Christ, the iniquity of us all. John 19 verse 30. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Now that phrase, it is finished, is mentioned two times in the Blessed King James Bible. And if we go to James 1 verse 15, we get the interpretation. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. See, there's that corn of wheat falling into the ground, dying, putting their faith and trust in Jesus Christ and the finished work of the cross and the blood he shed for our sins. And he said, sin when it is finished. So my friend, sin is finished. The bride hath prepared herself and made herself ready. Even so come, Lord Jesus. Hebrews 9, 26, For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, But now, once in the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. So we read in Luke 14, 28, For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? We read in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient to for thee for my strength is made perfect in weakness most gladly therefore will i rather glory in my infirmities that the power of christ may rest upon me so my grace is sufficient for thee the lord is saying that to you today friend that his grace is sufficient for you Don't be doubtful. Don't doubt your salvation. If you're one of these people preaching that you can lose your salvation, you're of a doubtful mind and you've yet to trust in Christ. God said that his grace is sufficient for you. And in Romans 5 verse 20, we read, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Continuing on with Luke 14 verse 31, Or what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand? Or else while the other is yet a great way off, He sendeth an ambassage and desireth conditions of peace. Verse 33, So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. So the Father has given us conditions of peace on how we have peace with him. And that's through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's through the Lord Jesus Christ, who's the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by him. Now these conditions of peace we find in Romans 10:15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? 
as it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. See, this is those conditions of peace. It's the gospel. Which you can find the gospel, the simple gospel, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 4, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and was buried and rose again on the third day. Acts chapter 7, verse 33, 33 representing Jesus Christ, Then said the Lord to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. Ephesians 6 verse 15, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. See, this is the preparation that you are to prepare to meet thy God. And this is the valley of decision. And you can either choose life, which is Jesus Christ, or you can choose death, which is the law, the ministration of death and condemnation. But you ain't going up to the Father with some dirty feet. That's why you got to have your feet washed with the water of the Word of God. And you must be clothed in the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you got to put off that old man. And you got to enter into the rest that is available for us in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It's a rest we have for our souls. Now that word forsaketh is mentioned six times in the Blessed King James Bible. We read in Luke 14 verse 33, So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh, not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Now if you remember in James chapter 2 verse 10, he says, For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. So Jesus said, Whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. We read in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 17, Which forsaketh the guide of her youth, and forgetteth the covenant of her God. Hebrews 8, verse 12 through 13, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. And that he saith, a new covenant, he has made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. <laughs>